Hey guys, welcome. My name is Daniel Gabriel. If you're new here, having research experience is becoming more and more important in applying to medical school. As medical school applications become more competitive, having research experience is one of those things that can make or break your application. So in this video, we're going to be talking about research. How can you find research opportunities in college? It's very hard and can easily be very counterproductive to find a research opportunity if you don't know what you're interested in. So the first thing is to find your interests. One way to do that is to think about what you like. If you're looking for a basic science research internship, for example, are you more interested in chemistry versus biology or biochemistry? Asking those broad questions helps you to begin to narrow down your interests. For example, if you're looking for research opportunities at your college, figure out what kind of research is going on at your college. Another way to think about it is to think about what most fascinates you, what, what questions do you have? A lot of research labs on a more basic level are really just asking scientific questions and then trying to figure it out. So if you figure out, for instance, that you're interested in neuroscience and then you're fascinated by how neurobiological mechanisms affect behavior, then you can start to think about like what sorts of labs you might want to be in. There are lots of research labs that ask fundamental questions around neurobiology and how that affects behavior. An important thing I like to say though is try to keep your research interests quite open because um, a lot of times what happens is early on you think you're really interested in something and then as time goes on your, your research interests might change let's say from freshman year to junior year and then at that point you want to do a different kind of research it's okay to change so it's okay to keep an open mind so you don't go down this rabbit hole and then figure out years down the line that you're not happy with the research you're doing and that you want to switch so I'd say pick two to three research areas you, you think you're interested in and go with one of them and see how that goes and then sort of explore from there. So now that you've done some deep thinking and you think you know what you might be interested in, I would suggest that you go speak with your advisor. Your advisor knows a lot of people in research and they're easily able to connect you with um, research mentors. But another good thing is that they've seen a lot of students struggle through that process. They've seen a lot of students eventually get matched up to research opportunities. So they have experience to that and they can easily help you figure out your options and figure out what you really need to be doing at every point. So now that you've figured out what research you think you might be interested in and you've spoken to an advisor, the next thing you want to do is to look for faculty research opportunities at your school. So after you found out some research topics you're interested in and you've spoken to an advisor, the next step is to find professors or researchers who are doing the kind of research you like and then make contact. So, in general, you want to find a professor who is doing the kind of research you want, yes. But at the same time, you want to find a research lab that's going to be conducive to your growth as a scientist. Because essentially what you're going to be learning from the research lab is how to conduct research, how to in interpret results, how to present your research, things that will help you grow as a scientist. So what you want to do is make sure that you're going to actually like being in that lab. So what I did, for instance, when I was looking for a research lab in my college was to reach out to students who I knew had worked in that lab and ask them very specific questions about what the experience was like working in that lab. These students can give you very good insight as to what the professor or researcher would be like as a mentor. Some questions to help you get started are things like, do you know this professor? Have you had a class with them? What do the other students say about them? Do they have any undergrads working with them currently? Do they have a lot of undergrads working in their lab versus only a few undergrads? That matters a lot because sometimes when they have a very huge research lab, it's hard for them to find time to really focus on your growth since there are a lot of other students the professor is working with as well. So in general, I prefer smaller labs where the professor is personable and likable and the professor can mentor you and teach you things and is very open to questions. Um, those are the kind of labs that will help you grow. So another thing to think about with research labs is when you're applying to a graduate school program like medical school, a lot of times that research supervisor or PI ends up writing your letter of recommendations. So the better they know you one-on-one, -on -one, the easier it is for them to write a really strong letter of recommendation that would help you get into medical school. So the next step is then to make contact with this professor. So email them, tell them a little bit about yourself and that you found their research lab and you're really interested in the kind of work they do and you'd like to join their lab. A lot of professors are very open to having students in their labs except they're full. So you definitely want to reach out. So reaching out to professors is really important and I'm actually going to talk about two quote unquote advanced techniques that can really up your game in terms of getting some amazing research opportunities. Now the first is to just cold email professors. So I went to a small college that had fantastic opportunities. But sometimes I found myself asking what else is out there? What other research questions are other labs asking? 
And particularly for summer internships, I wanted to get some more broader experiences or larger academic institutions. And what I did was basically old email professors and PIs. What I'll do is I'll go on the school's website and then figure out what kind of research labs are at the school and then find the PI or find some other contact in the lab on the website and then just email them. Tell them a little bit about myself, my interests, and that I really want to join their lab and see what they're doing. In total, I sent probably over 50 emails and I think about two or three of them got back to me. So you might not have a really high success rate, but you can really get some amazing opportunities just doing that. The second tip I'll give you is to volunteer with professors. So sometimes professors might not have research opportunities in their labs, but they might be okay with you volunteering and helping out. I actually did this with one of the labs I worked at in college where for one semester the lab was quite full and what I did was once a week I'll just come help out in the research lab, shadow some of the other students and get to know what the research lab was about. By doing that the PI saw my commitment and dedication to join that lab and then come next semester I got the opportunity to fully join that lab so that was great. And then the last thing I would say is Google is your best friend. A lot of opportunities out there that a lot of people miss out on just because they don't actually take the time to do research. For example, if you're an international pre-med student and you're finding it hard to find summer research internships, which is the case a lot of the times just because there are limited opportunities for international students, what you can do is just Google. Just take your time to really look on the internet. There are some opportunities you can find on there that are not necessarily advertised. So you just really want to take a deep dive into that. So I was editing this video and I just remembered this tip. If you cannot find any research opportunities, create yours. Now, before you do something like this, you want to make sure you're already doing well in school and you can balance all things in your life because it can be pretty demanding. I think it gets to this idea of creating your own opportunities, which I think is extremely empowering. Um, sometimes you might not necessarily find what you want um, just by following the status quo and sometimes you just have to think outside the box. I actually have a personal experience with this. So in college, I was very interested in mental health research in my home country, Nigeria, and I began thinking about how I could really conduct a research project back there. So I've always been really interested in education and how education can really change our world. And I wanted to do something at the intersection of mental health advocacy and education. So what I did was I led a research project, basically served as the principal investigator on a project in Nigeria where I was implementing a mental health literacy curriculum in high schools to see if that would have an effect on students' attitudes, knowledge, and perceptions about mental health. My belief is that if we can get youth to begin thinking about mental health differently and understand that mental health is important for everyone and the people with mental health disorders are not inherently violent or dangerous, then we can really go a long way in society. So my goal was to educate youth. What I did was reach out to a professor who was doing a similar research. And actually this is where cold emailing comes into play. I actually cold emailed this professor and he responded back to me. It was actually a psychiatrist um, who was originally from Nigeria, doing some research back in Nigeria, but also here in the US. And you know, I got coffee with him. I talked about my ideas. He helped me refine my ideas and think about how I could write a research proposal. So I, I wrote a draft of a research proposal, sent it to him, he did some edits, sent it back to me, and we were able to refine that idea. Eventually I submitted an IRB proposal on my school and got approved to conduct research. And at that point, another professor actually helped me out with that. I reached out to a psychology professor at my college and I told her about the research idea and she was really excited about it and wanted to be on it with me. So she came on it, really helped me think about the research project and what it involved. and how to partner with different people. And the project became a huge success. I eventually went back to Nigeria to implement this project and learned so much from it. I actually think this project was really one of the main things that helped me stand out when applying to medical schools. So all this to say that if you can find research opportunities, create your own, and they can actually turn out to be some of the most meaningful experiences you have just because of how much you learn from it. So. I hope you found that helpful. So there you go guys. In this video we discussed how to find research opportunities as a college student. The first thing you want to do is to figure out what you're really interested in and then speak to an advisor to gain some insight and to potentially get some connections to some research opportunities. Next, find a good PI or research supervisor. Next thing, reach out to professors. Don't be afraid to cold email professors. Sometimes you might have to volunteer before you get into a lab. And lastly, Google is your best friend. Do some research. If you really can't find research opportunities, do some more research. You might be able to find a few things online. So if you found this video helpful, like this video, comment, subscribe, share, and I'll see you guys in the next video.